And I know that you and Terry talked about um, Avery Williams kind of being a joker. And really, when we talked to him the other day, it really did seem like he's up for anything. I'm just curious, kind of like, now that you've seen him in person, gotten your hands on him a little bit, like, what vision do you see for him? Early on, I mean, we put him in the DB room. Um, so we expect him to be to be competing in there. And then, obviously, on fourth down, you know, that's where we want him to have an impact. And so, uh, you know, I'm just stating the obvious when we draft him. And then if he can handle that, like all these guys, you know, handle the role that they're given. And, and if they can, we can expand it. Michael Rothstein. Good morning. Um, kind of curious, what was it like for you yesterday? Because that, that was really your first time on the field with a big whistle. Like, what, what was what was all that like for you? Oh, it was it was exciting. Um I did, you know, kind of reflected last night. I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, it, you know, when you're in the moment, it's like everything. It's it's what you've been doing your whole life. So it was fun. It was exciting. It was good to get back on the field. So, But, I mean, it was like, did anything feel different? Like you said, you reflected on it a little bit last night. Like, was there any part of you that was like, wow, like, you know, I mean, this is something you've been striving for for a while. Sure. Not not in the moment. Like I usually, it's, it's usually at night when you're going back watching the film, watching the, the different individual drills. You take a moment. You're like, all right, well now I got to be, I'm responsible for the entire team. And it's it's cool. It's surreal. It's what you wanted. It's what you signed up. What I signed up for. Appreciate it. Thank you. No, thank you, Kelsey Conway. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on Michael's question. For you to uh, be involved, it looked like you were moving around the field the whole time, especially with the defensive guys. Um, what was that like for you, and what did you think of the day that Darren Hall, we saw he had an interception, and Richie Grant had yesterday? Well, it's like all these rookies. I mean, we're, it's, a, it's a rookie orientation. There's so much, you know, to throw at them. I mean, they're coming off the pre-draft process, and then, you know, they get here. There's a lot of adrenaline going that first day. You, you see it. I mean, that, that, some of these guys are spent. They have that adrenaline dump before, you you know, you get through three plays and walk through. And we're bringing them along slowly, just starting from the ground up. Um, we actually really want going full throttle when that interception happens. So, you know, tell the quarterbacks you can throw it. The guy's wide open. You usually want to hold the ball, go through the progression. He decided to throw it. We didn't catch it. And, you know, obviously the ball got tipped that way. Not to discredit the defense, but it wasn't like we were going live in that. So it's hard to give you a full speed evaluation there. So we're bringing them along and working them up. And then um, I know we talked to Terry about Hawkins, but uh, what do you like about Hawkins and what he can potentially bring for you guys at running back? Well, both him and Caleb uh, are going to have every opportunity. Obviously, they're a little bit different of a player, but they both have a, a, a solid skill set that we like, which why we wanted to bring them in here. Obviously, Hawkins, if you're going to be, you know, is, Tough when you're when you're his size and you and you you can run between the tackles like he can, and and he's fast. So he, he's a little bit of a change of pace. Again, these guys are all going to have an opportunity as they fight it out in camp. Allison Mastrangelo. Now that you've had a chance to work with Kyle Pitts just briefly, what are your just overall impressions of him on the field? Even though I know it's just walkthroughs and things like that. Yeah, it's hard with the snap judgment like that. The real thing with all these rookies. Uh, you know, you've been through it with some other guys. You know, there's a there's a lot of that we have high expectations for all the rookies, and we want these guys to have high expectations for themselves. But we got to bring them along and not overreact. As as you know, as you get through the season, I think it's hard for guys' career. It's a long journey for Kyle, for Richie, for all these guys, whoever emerges. And that's a, that's a that's the biggest thing in here is when you get the stuff outside and you, people want to give them nicknames already had and play the snap. And he knows that Kyle, Kyle's wired the right way. Um, and it's not to overact. It's the hardest thing to do because everybody wants instant gratification. I've seen it happen with Derek Henry. I've seen it happen with Johnny, and it turned out really well for them. But it, it's tough. It's the NFL. It's super competitive, and we just can't overreact. As we we got a plan to bring him along, and uh, he'll control that. So this might be hard for you to answer them, but besides Kyle Pitts, has there been one rookie on the field or in the the, the meetings that has kind of stood out to you that's impressed you more now that you've had a chance to, to meet them all? It's a solid class. Uh, you know, it's, it's, that's, a, that's a good thing organizationally when you bring guys in. We know what type of player we're looking for, and now they're here. We've got to we got to bring them along in the way we want things done, practice. And so you're just you're starting from the from the ground up. Um, but overall, it's a, it's a solid rookie class that we, we think has a chance. Tori, follow up. Yeah, I, uh, 
Uh, we were talking to Frank Darby the other day, and he he made a comment that I really loved. And he was kind of saying, like, if someone doesn't set the tone, he will. And, and I know it's just been one practice, but is that something that you've already seen from him? I mean, all these guys, I mean, it's, you know, uh, they had no idea what they're stepping into. And that's not, it's just, it's just such a different game. I mean, the rookies coming to their first practice and whether they're here or somewhere else, it's, and it, you know, they haven't seen the vets run across from them yet. So, like all these guys, they're 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 some of these guys, their heads are spinning. Uh, so we'll let it play out. We'll see if Frank makes sure he gets lined up and can do the b- bottom line of his job description, and then we'll see what kind of tone he sets. Michael, yeah, for, from a workflow perspective, this weekend, I mean, how much can you really get accomplished considering the numbers are what they are, and they're you know far fewer than what even a traditional rookie minicamp would have been a few years ago? Like, how how much has that altered it? Well, it's just it's you adapt to the situation, Michael. I mean, it's a guy told me long enough. You you know you can sit here and gripe about it, the rules, this and that, whatever. Great, uh, you know like you'll go by the philosophy. Like you may you may hate change, but you'll loathe extinction. So it's my job to make sure here are the rules. You know we're coming out of this pandemic protocols. You're not going to have a full rookie camp. You know we want to be smart how we bring these guys along. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but the way we believe we're going to build these guys and again start from the ground up and and bring them along. So. I think we're in a good spot, but we'll always adapt. You know, they give us the rules. They change the rules every year, and uh, no reason to gripe about it. Learn the rules. Try to coach the best that you can uh, to the situation. So that's what, that's what we'll do. Was there, was there something that you saw in your past with working the guys in, with the ten, working with the guys of Tennessee that made you want to choose this path? Like you said, there's multiple different ways to go about a rookie mini camp. That made you want to choose kind of going from the ground up path that, you're, that you've talked about. Um, there was a lot of factors. I mean, obviously, the, you, I tried to learn from everybody I ever worked with, you know, going back even in Washington and just seeing how things have evolved in the, in the NFL calendar and, and then looking at different sports. I mean, just trying to be – it's got to work for us. Like, I don't get caught up. You try to educate yourself. What's the best? You know, you're looking at different things in sports science. You're looking at numbers. How can we – and really the different teaching methods. And so you're just looking around for anything that you think can help your team. And not, I'm not trying to be too concerned about – somebody else outside of here is doing, but we're constantly evaluating, Michael. Yeah, that's, a, that's the approach that, that, that we'll have as long as I'm here. Kelsey? Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Allison? I was just curious, what do you think is the biggest adjustment for rookies coming in? We, we hear them talk about getting adjusted to the playbook, the speed of the game, then the meetings and time management. What do you think is the biggest adjustment for them and what will it be for them to be successful coming into the league? I think, uh, you know, again, they, all these guys are different, you know, depending on the program they're coming from or, you know, what, what stage they're at in their life. You know, some of these guys are younger than others, guys that come out after, you know, three years of college, guys are fifth years is obviously a, a different level of maturity. Um, not to say that you can't be 20, be way more mature than a guy that's 23. I'm not saying that, but uh, it's just finding a routine. It's, it's just so different. It's just like my job is a lot different than, a, than being a head coach in college football. They're different. They're different jobs, and the job title might sound the same, and, but they're, they're different industries. And uh, I'm realizing that you know, if you're not on the scholarship, and that's not a knock at all in college football, but there's a lot of things that take away their time that that aren't there anymore, and they got to adjust to that, find a routine. Yeah, 